Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to go over several revision problems taken from the entire chapter. Okay, here's our first problem. We have these four equations. Three out of the four equations are equations of lines which are parallel to each other. Which equation does not have a graph that is a line parallel to the other three? Right. Now the first thing we'll have to do is to find the slope of each of the lines. Remember, parallel lines have the same slope. m1 is equal to m2, where m1 and m2 are the slopes of the lines. So try this yourself, and we'll revise it together. Done? Okay, let's go over the answer. Let's look at equation A. We have to do a little bit of rearranging to find the slope. If we divide by 8 on both sides, we get y is equal to negative 6 over 8x is equal to negative 3 over 4x, which is y is equal to mx, a direct variation equation, so we know that negative 3 over 4 is the slope for line A. The second one, B. Now, this is an example of a point-slope equation. Remember, in the point-slope form, we have y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So, this has been neatly put into the form for us. So we just have to pick out the slope here. That will be 4 over 3. So m for m2 for b, or the slope of b, is 4 over 3. So we can already see that one of these must be the odd one out, because because their slopes are different. Now, line C. We should recognize this as an example of the slope-intercept form, or y is equal to mx plus c. So, looking at the structure of our equation here, we've got our y, we've got our m, the slope, over there, so m for number for c is negative 3 over 4. And since we were told that three of the lines have the same slope and there's only one odd one out, we already know that it must be b. But just to be thorough, we will solve for d as well, the slope of d. d requires a little more rearranging. If we take, if we subtract 3x from both sides, we get 4y is equal to minus 6, minus 3x minus 16, divide by 4 to find y is equal to minus 3 over 4x minus 4, and this is an example of the slope-intercept form, so this would be our slope here, minus 3 over 4, which just serves to... So now we know we're right. Okay, moving on. Try simplifying these two expressions using the distributive property. And we'll go over them in a moment. Okay, let's go over the answer. Applying the distributive property to this expression, we multiply 11 by v, 11v, and then subtract the product of 11 and minus, 11 and 2. So 11v minus 11 times 2, we've got 11v minus 22, our expanded form. Moving on to b, we do the same thing. We multiply half times b, so we've got b over 2, and then we add that to 
half times c. So that will be c over 2. And this looks good. Next problem. Let's try a word problem. Two trains leave a station at the same time. The first train is traveling north at 55 miles per hour, and the second train is traveling south, south, yes, south at 35 miles per hour. How long does it take until they're 45 miles apart? 45 miles. Okay, try this on your own. Okay, let's go over it. Now, we have to create an equation and then solve it. What are we solving for? Time in miles. So we can take our variable to be h. That is time in miles. Uh, t sorry, time in hours. Time in hours. Yes. And we have been given the distance apart that the trains are. Now, speed is equal to distance over time. So when you multiply speed times time, you get distance. So if we take our first speed, that's 55 miles per hour times our time. Remember, we don't know the time yet, so we'll leave that as h. Then we add the speed of the second train, that's 35 miles per hour, multiplied by the same time. So that's speed times time, a distance, this is the distance the first train travels, plus the distance the second train travels, will equal 45 miles at the time h. And now we just have to solve for that. So adding these together, we get 90h is equal to 45, h is equal to 0 0.5 hours. Ta-da! See you next time!